uh, the ordinary citizen. I think Margaret said it's uh, only up to a point, then it becomes counterproductive. And uh, that overburdening, I think, uh, you put it very eloquently in terms of uh, reaching a level where it actually breaches that uh, uh, social contract. I think from the presentation we've had, I want to thank you very much for joining us and uh, uh, making very specific uh, recommendations. Uh, I think Masinde had uh, a very interesting analogy of the mosquito net. Uh, where uh, uh, the citizen in a crisis during COVID, there were many safety nets that were put in place to cushion uh, the citizen uh, from the harsh economic adversities that came with COVID-19. Some of the things that we did at the time, because I was in that administration, was the reduction of taxes. You have talked about that tax burden, uh, the other experts have talked about reduction of uh, certain taxes, but at the height of COVID, I think we did reduce certain taxes, including uh, the income tax from 30 to 25%. We had uh, the VAT itself. At the time, I think we were at uh, 16%. We reduced it to 14%. And we had other tax waivers for those low income earners, as I saw in your presentation, you're saying those at the bottom are the ones bearing the greatest burden when we are burdening the, the, the taxpayer. And we had a cutoff for those who are earning 24,000 uh, monthly salaries and below. We cushioned them against this. I think other COVID uh, inter, uh, interventions that we have put touch on the education sector, and I think you have recommended in more investment in education. Uh, we had the infrastructure, building classrooms and desks and many other interventions across different sectors. So what would like you to uh, probably, I, I don't know if you're following your other presenters in terms of the specific areas of reduction. So the issue is not uh, if it is how we can reduce this burden that uh, is a real serious uh, challenge to the taxpayer. And uh, we don't reach a situation where we have this situation like uh, Rose in the Bible or Balaam and the donkey where the donkey was uh, overburdened to the point of actually talking to Balaam. I think where we've reached in Kenya today, Kenyans are like that donkey that had to talk, go to the streets and talk and say, this burden is too much. So we are looking at the areas where the burden can be reduced for Kenyans to breathe in terms of short term and in terms of long term intervention. So as you uh, conclude, probably we already have what you have presented but if you have anything uh, more in terms of specific areas of reduction, we'd we'll be very happy to receive your written uh, presentations, in addition to what you have presented, which really, really uh, agrees with what the others have presented. Thank you. Thank you, Eugene. Uh, Catherine? Yes, uh, thank you, Arthur, for your presentation. You have actually touched on many issues, especially when you look at the cost of living in terms of food and the poverty level, food poverty levels for the ordinary Kenyans. This is indeed something that touches most of the Kenyans. And you've also gone ahead to give us and explored ways in which we can pursue to settle this. One of the ways you talked about is the reduction of budgetary deficits. Specifically, maybe you'd have gone ahead and looked at this budgetary in your submissions if you're going to do any other uh, supplementary paper. Which specific budgetary deficits are you pointing at? You have been very specific on the tax, and I think I like the idea that you talked about progressive taxation, which will be encouraged for the low cadre people, I mean, earning Kenyans maybe to pay less, and also for the, for the well, well earning, well earning, maybe pay 